welcome to organic reaction mechanism part 2 where we are going to look into the following reactions with mechanisms the first one is aldol condensation this is an example of aldol condensation where acetaldehyde when reacted with dilute KOH gives us crotonaldehyde as the final product through an intermediate which is 3-hydroxy butanol. This reaction is given by aldehydes and ketones containing alpha hydrogen atom. In the presence of dilute alkali, two molecules are condensed to form alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. This reaction is called as aldol condensation because two molecules are joining together and a small unit is lost between them. We have OH minus in the system along with our aldehyde molecule. Oxygen is known to be electronegative. It will withdraw electrons and it will gain partial minus charge. This withdrawal is reflected on the neighboring carbon which continues up to hydrogen. So this hydrogen has weak positive charge. OH- will attack on this hydrogen. Remember that statement when you make one you break one. So when you are making bond with hydrogen you are going to break this bond of hydrogen. Electrons are going on CH2. Electrons are going on CH2 so CH2 gets minus charge and the other product is nothing but water which is formed by combination of OH minus and H. This species is carbonian where carbon has a negative charge. This species is stabilized via resonal. They will attack other aldehyde molecules because those aldehydes have electron deficient center. So CS2 minus will attack on this carbon which is electron deficient. When you make one, you break one. What you are going to get next it will be oxygen is receiving the electrons so oxygen will get minus charge ch2 minus has given electrons to this carbon so there will be a bond between these two carbons ch2 and c so we have this bond ch2 and c this minus charge can be neutralized by contribution from water which is OH minus will attack on hydrogen and so you get this O minus getting transformed into OH. On warming this neighboring OH and H are removed from the molecule and we get formation of a double bond. This carbon as per common nomenclature is alpha and this is beta because this is the main functional group. So alpha beta we have unsaturation. So we call this type of aldehydes as alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. Let us solve another example. What is the action of 20% NUH on propanol explained with the help of mechanism. Why don't you pause the video and try to solve it and then let us compare our answers. I guess you are done with your answer and let us compare our notes. Propanol is a 3 carbon aldehyde. So we make 3 carbon aldehyde. It is reacted with 20% anyways. So these are the conditions for aldol condensation. 
and remember one thing and log can be replaced on AC1 by a dihydrogen daily alpha hydrogen atom that hydrogen atom is removed by the base OH minus so we assume a removal of hydrogen from this carbon because this is alpha carbon and it will be transformed into minus charge and this will go and attack on this carbon and when you make one you break one so we have a broad idea how to write the product so we will write the product CH3 CH2 C CH3 CH2 C we attack by this CH2 which has CH3 and CHO on either of the sides so you join this CH2 after removal of H it will become CH so this is that CH which is connected to this blue carbon so we have this connection between them and the other two groups CH3 and CHO are put on either side of this CH we have opened this bond to make O minus that O minus will take hydrogen finally to become OH so this is the, the first step on heating loss of water is to be considered so OH from this carbon and H from this carbon will give us a double bond between them this is how the final product is formed as per the mechanism we take this alpha carbon it has two hydrogen one of the hydrogen is written in details and then this hydrogen has partial positive charge as we have seen that oxygen is withdrawing the electrons and this leads to generation of a small amount of positive charge on hydrogen when you make one you break one electrons are going on this CH so the CH gains minus charge so it becomes a stable carbonion plus water this carbonion will attack on other aldehyde make one and break one bond opens up so it becomes O minus this CH will attack on this carbon so now there is supposed to be a bond between them this is that bond which we are imagining here O minus take up hydrogen from water it becomes OH on warming loss of water takes place from these two adjacent carbons and we get double bond predict the product now since we have understood the mechanism we are supposed to write the product formed in this reaction this is a mixture of two different aldehydes this aldehyde has alpha hydrogen atom this aldehyde does not have any hydrogen or alpha carbon so obviously we will remove this alpha hydrogen from ethanol it will become CH2 minus and it will go in a on this carbon so this should be the first step product then loss of water OH from this carbon and H from this carbon is lost so we are expecting a double bond on heating in this position so we get a double bond here after loss of water Hoffman rearrangement when primary amides are treated with a mixture of aqueous NaOH and bromine they get converted into primary amine this reaction is called as Hoffman rearrangement 
or half moon reaction. Example, acetamide gets converted into methylamine after half moon rearrangement. This is the example where we have taken an amide, CONH2 functionality is known as amide. This is acetylamide molecule. When it is reacted with a mixture of NaOH and bromine, we get amine. We have this CH3CONH2. We are writing hydrogens in detail. We have taken mixture of sodium hydroxide and bromine. So we have OH minus. OH minus will take out this hydrogen because nitrogen is electronegative and it is a withdrawal. This hydrogen has partial positive charge. So OH minus can abstract this hydrogen. When you make one, you break one. So nitrogen is gaining negative charge after receiving the electrons. And this nitrogen with a minus charge will attack on this bromine, which may get induced dipole moment with temporary distribution of electron density and generation of plus and minus polarities. So N minus will attack on electron deficient bromine. When you make one, again you break one. Now you will get a bond between nitrogen and bromine. So we have NBr. This hydrogen is still acidic because it has partial positive charge. OH minus remove this hydrogen. Now we have some concerted steps of making and forming of few bonds. Now we have some concerted steps happening together. OH minus takes out this hydrogen. The bond is shifting on the bond between nitrogen and carbonyl. At the same time, the pi bond of C double bond O is breaking and electrons are given on oxygen. When you consider all these three steps together, you get a double bond between nitrogen and carbon. And this bond opened up on oxygen, so the oxygen has taken up negative charge. OH has taken out H, so it has formed water. Now this negative charge will be again delocalized on the neighboring carbon. At that moment, this methyl is detaching itself and migrating to nitrogen and Br is leaving the system. These three concerted steps give rise to this arrangement where oxygen is making double bond with carbon. We already had double bond between carbon and nitrogen. And methyl had migrated to nitrogen. So we have this methyl on nitrogen. Now this carbon being electron deficient in nature it can be attacked by OH minus. You make one and then you transform this bond on hydrogen. Again, few concerted steps are taking place together. OH attacks on this carbon because it is electron deficient. We shift this bond, one of the bonds to hydrogen of water. We get OH on C double bond O. This this carbonyl is connected to nitrogen through a single bond because we broke away one bond. And this nitrogen has taken up this hydrogen. So we have this hydrogen which was taken up from water. Now another stream of concerted steps will take place where this hydrogen is acidic. So it's taken up by OH minus redistribution of bonds from this side to this side and 
breaking of the bond between carbonyl and nitrogen will give us loss of carbon dioxide and formation of CH3 NH4. Let us see another example where we have taken an amide of three carbons, propane amide, and it is converted to ethyl amide. So starting compound had three carbons and the product has only two carbons. We know that this carbon in the form of carbonyl is lost as carbon dioxide at the end of the reaction. We will again repeat all the steps which we have seen for acetamide. Write the hydrogens of NH2 in details. Bring one OH minus. Remove that H. Generate negative charge on nitrogen. You get N with a minus charge. Bring bromine into picture. Bromine has induced dipole. Nitrogen attacks on electron deficient bromine. Break the bond between bromine atoms and get bromine on nitrogen. The second hydrogen is again removed by OH, but this time many steps are taking place together. Formation of bond between OH and H, breaking of bond between H and N, and this bond is getting transformed between C double bond O and N, and opening of C double bond O, one of the bonds of C double bond O. Follow the arrows and try to make the product. We lost hydrogen, so there is no hydrogen on this nitrogen. We shifted this bond between carbonyl and nitrogen, so now there is a double bond between carbonyl and nitrogen. At the same time, you open pi bond, so this oxygen has a single bond with minus charge because it is receiving the electrons. Now, we will again shift the arrows. Nitrogen, oxygen is giving back the electrons and this methyl is migrating on nitrogen and bromine is leaving the system. Accordingly, when we write the product, remember, oxygen has a single bond and we are shifting this electron to make one more bond. So oxygen will have a double bond. Carbon and nitrogen already have a double bond. So we have this carbon nitrogen double bond. Ethyl has migrated to nitrogen. So this ethyl has now changed its position and it has come to nitrogen. So what is remaining is loss of this unit in the form of carbon dioxide. And then we will have our final product. For that, we consider OH minus and water in the picture. You make attack by OH minus on carbon, bond opens up on hydrogen, we get this product where OH is now connected to the carbonyl. This hydrogen is acidic, OH minus can again remove this hydrogen. This hydrogen is acidic, OH minus will take out this hydrogen. This bond is shifted on this side to make carbon dioxide. This bond is broken down and electrons are given to hydrogen, which leads to loss of carbon dioxide and formation of CH3, CH2, NH2, Marconic oxidation. The statement for Marconic oxidation is, when an unsymmetrical alkene reacts with an unsymmetrical reagent, the negative part of the reagent goes to the carbon atom, which has least number of hydrogen. Propene, when reacts with HBr, it produces 2-bromopropane as the major product. We will see the Example, CH, this is propene. This alkene is unsymmetrical because if we cut from the double bond, we get two unequal parts. So this alkene is unsymmetrical. So when unsymmetrical alkene reacts with unsymmetrical reagent, even the reagent is unsymmetrical, on cutting, we do not get equal parts. And as per the electronegativities and electron density distribution, hydrogen is supposed to have positive charge and bromine is supposed to have negative charge. So the statement says that negative part of the reagent goes to the carbon which has less number of hydrogen. So 
to be get two bromopropane as a major product in this reaction. This is as per Markovnikov's rule of addition. Mechanism wise, this reaction takes place in two steps. The first step is attack of pi bond on hydrogen of HBr to form a carbonium ion and that carbonium ion is attacked by Br- in the second step. This is a alkene or electron rich species, they have hydrogen as partial plus charge. So this electron density from alkene is shifted on hydrogen. When you make one, you break one. What you are going to get is this CH2 attacking on hydrogen. So we get CH2 attached to hydrogen. We have taken out the electrons from the system, so this carbon gets a positive charge. This carbon is a secondary carbonium ion and it is stable via electron donation from the neighbors. Br minus attacks on this electron deficient carbonium and we get two bromopropane as the final product. Another example is isobutene, which produces tertiary butyl bromide as the major product, and we have to explain it with the help of mechanism. So this is the reaction, this is isobutene, when we react with HBr, what we get is tertiary butyl bromide as the final product. So here again what is happening is negative part is going to the carbon, which is having lesser number of hydrogen. Mechanism wise, you bring isobutene plus HBr together, this hydrogen has partial positive charge because of electron withdrawal, so you can open up the bond of hydrogen, make one and break one. You will get this intermediate carbonium ion where this carbon has positive charge. This is stabilized by electron donation of neighboring groups. Br- will finally attack on this tertiary carbonium ion and we get the final product. 2 bromo to methylpropane or tertiary butyl bromide. Anti Markovnikov addition. In the presence of peroxide, when HBr is reacted with an asymmetrical alkene, the bromine atom goes to the carbon which has more number of hydrogen atoms. This addition is called as anti Markovnikov addition or peroxide. So, here what is happening is the negative part of the reagent is going to carbon which has more number of hydrogen. Example, when propane is reacted with HBr in the presence of peroxide, this Br- goes to this carbon which has more number of hydrogen. So we get one bromo propane as the major product. This will happen because of addition of peroxide in the reaction. This is also called as peroxide effect. Mechanism wise, when we have peroxide in our system, they undergo homolytic fission. We get three radicals. These radicals, when react with HBr, they generate three bromide radicals. This bromide radical reacts with the first carbon and generates secondary radical, which is more stable. Secondary radical finally takes up hydrogen from HBr to homolytic fission and we get the final product as one bromo propane. This completes the second part of our discussion. The mechanism of remaining reactions will be discussed in the part 3.